Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we're discussing the peritoneal cavity in the previous video we've already talked about the peritoneum and its various layers so as we all know what is a cavity it is usually formed between two layers right and in case of the lung it was between the parietal and visceral pleura in case of the heart similarly there were two layers of pericardium forming that pericardial cavity and just like that in the abdomen we have the peritoneal cavity the peritoneal cavity is formed between the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum all right although peritoneal cavity is collapsed normally because your organs are so big that they are occupying your entire abdomen the peritoneal cavity is a potential space right that means that if uh, the organs were to move they can easily move because there is this space now imagine if there was no space how would the organs move right so this peritoneal cavity has some mesothelial cells that are always secreting fluid into the uh, peritoneal into this cavity so that it remains lubricated so that's why your organs are easily able to move between the parietal and the visceral layers i hope that makes sense so peritoneal cavity is that space between the parietal and visceral peritoneums so the peritoneal cavity is basically divided into two parts this is something that's very unique to the peritoneal cavity in the peritoneal cavity because there are folds of the peritoneum they have caused the peritoneal cavity to divide into two parts one part is known as the greater sac and the other part is known as the lesser sac all right so broadly it is divided into these two parts the part where the greater sac and lesser sac communicate with each other is known as the epiploic foramen so what are the functions of the peritoneal cavity there are five functions in total of the peritoneal cavity let's discuss them individually the first function is that i just told you there are mesothelial cells constantly secreting fluid into this peritoneal cavity so this allows the lubrication therefore the movement of the viscera is possible because of the slipperiness the, you know the viscera have to undergo peristalsis or they have to move with the movements of the respiration all of these are possible because of the peritoneal cavity all right the protection of viscera basically the peritoneum contains phagocytic cells which guard against infection and not just that the greater omentum that we just talked about the greater omentum has this very uh, unique feature is that it's the policeman of the abdomen and why is that because whenever there is any kind of uh, inflammation or infection in a in an area of the abdomen for instance uh, this is a small intestine all right this is a small intestine there is an infection right over here okay the greater omentum what it does is it has the power to move towards the site of infection so that the infection remains localized and it does not spread so therefore it is known as the policeman of the abdomen so let's suppose this is the greater omentum and let's suppose this is the infection right here greater omentum is suspended from the stomach in front of the small intestine in normal circumstances what happens is there is an infection right here so what the greater omentum and let, let's suppose this is the parietal peritoneum right here before that infection can spread to the peritoneum and the uh, neighboring organs your greater omentum has the power to go there and it seals this area off so the infection will not spread here or here it can delay the onset of peritonitis that is something we'll discuss in the clinicals all right so the protection function is very important function of your peritoneal cavity along with the peritoneum the other function is that it heals it has the power to heal mesothelial cells that are secreting fluid they also have the power to transform into fibroblasts and you know that fibroblasts are the uh, chief healing cells of the body right next function of the peritoneal cavity is that it helps with the absorption because it's a semi permeable membrane it helps with the absorption and in therapeutic cases it helps with dialysis in cases where the person is admitted in the hospital with you know issues of the kidneys the kidneys aren't working then dialysis is performed through the peritoneal cavity because there is semi permeable membrane and it can help with the absorption apart from that you can also use the peritoneal cavity to administer antibiotics the final function is that it is a storage area for fat all right so now that we've talked about the functions of the peritoneal cavity let's touch the clinicals of the peritoneal cavity first clinical obviously is when there is fluid being filled when there is any abnormal material present in the peritoneal cavity such as fluid whenever there is any infective fluid in your peritoneal cavity it is known as ascites the filling of fluid in the peritoneal cavity all right if this fluid happens to be blood this will be known as the hemoperitoneum whereas if this 
constituent is air, it will be known as the pneumoperitoneum, right? So what are the incidences where ascites takes place? What are the causes for ascites? So the etiology of the ascites is always when there is excess fluid in the body. And what are the cases where there is excess fluid in the body? When your heart is failing, the congestive cardiac failure, when there is cirrhosis of the liver, there is malignancy in your body. Malignancy in your body. And other causes include there is loss of plasma proteins like nephrotic syndrome and uh, other cases like traumatic cases when there is hemoperitoneum because of internal bleeding. All of these are causes of why the peritoneal cavity will be filled with any kind of fluid. Cases of pneumoperitoneum, this can be caused when there is perforation of a gastric ulcer. There is an ulcer in your stomach. It gets perforated. So the air that lies in the stomach goes into your peritoneal cavity. All right. The next thing that we're going to study is the peritonitis. Now this is, we all know that itis means inflammation. Inflammation of the what? Peritoneum, the layer that covers the abdominal cavity. When that is inflamed due to infection or due to any acid reaching there, anything, it can result in peritonitis. This is, there are two types of peritonitis. There's a localized peritonitis. There is a generalized peritonitis. Guys, one thing I want you to remember for the rest of your life is that generalized peritonitis is something that is super lethal you cannot let that go on you have to treat it emergency in emergency all right localized peritonitis still can be saved but generalized peritonitis is a surgical emergency all right and how does this peritonitis even happen so we all know that there is a viscera suppose there is a liver this is the parietal peritoneum we all know that uh, the visceral peritoneum will never feel pain but if the liver starts enlarging and it comes in contact with the peritoneum, it will cause the spread of infection in the peritoneum. For now, this part of the peritoneum is inflamed. This is known as localized peritonitis. If you are not going to fix this localized peritonitis via antibiotics and other measures, this peritonitis may spread to the entire peritoneum within a matter of days and result in generalized peritonitis. When does generalized peritonitis occur? In normal uh, circumstances, you will see it. In cases of when there is appendicitis is when appendicitis, what happens is uh, the appendix basically gets inflamed and if not treated, the pus and all the infection can spread to the surrounding meso appendix, the surrounding peritoneum. If that is not treated, eventually the entire peritoneum will get infected and it will cause generalized peritonitis. Now you have to do surgery for it. And what is the surgery for abdomen? This is known as the laparotomy, the opening up of abdomen to carry out surgery, which is known as the laparotomy. Sometimes if we just want to view what's happening inside the abdomen, where the infection is, we can carry out what you call a laparoscopy. In that you just insert a laparoscope within holes made in the skin of your abdomen. And within that you pass it tube or a probe that has camera in it and you can actually visualize what is happening inside. Another clinical is the paracentesis. Paracentesis is basically aspiration of the fluid in the peritoneal cavity. If there is any ascites or blood or any fluid filling in the peritoneal cavity, we need to get it out, right? We need to drain it. So how do we carry that out? We carry out paracentesis, we insert a needle and we take out the fluid from that cavity. So what are the locations we can do the paracentesis in taking care of the important structures of the abdomen? There are three places we can do the paracentesis. First is that midway between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis, just midway over here, we can insert the needle because this is lying just above the bladder. So you won't, you have less chances to damage the bladder. This point lies just above the bladder. And make sure when you are carrying out the paracentesis, we make sure that the bladder is empty. Otherwise, it'll be large and it will occupy more space, right? Another point where you can carry out paracentesis is just above the anterior superior iliac spine, all right? So these were the locations where you can carry out paracentesis. Overall, that's all we need to know about the peritoneal cavity. I hope that makes sense to you. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.